These simple concepts we want to talk about in this uh, little video, uh, but are really important. They're simple but important. And what we want to talk about is um, body planes and abdominal quadrants and regions. Okay, and that's what we're going to be talking about over the next few minutes. Here. First of all, what in the world are body planes? Okay, body planes are sort of geometric uh, planes that divide the body into sections uh, that are used to be able to assist uh, in describing uh, directions of things, in describing positions of one thing in relationship to something else, and locations of various body structures. And what they're they're created like in X Y Z uh, graph. Okay, if you're familiar with, if you if you like math and you've done graphing, you know you have an x y x and a y uh, axis. But now we're going to add a z axis as well to that. And what these planes do is they equally divide the body into a right and the left side. They divide the body into a front and a back side, and they divide the body into a top and a bottom side, and all through a center area, which is sort of like that single and center point. So basically, these these anatomical body um, anatomical body planes are there to help assist in uh, identifying the position of various things in the body. And we'll be talking about where things are and how things relate to a certain plane. It also has a significance, uh, which is even more important than that radiographically, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. And what happens is the body has what, are we, what we call three cardinal planes, three cardinal planes. And these three cardinal planes will do, will, one of them is called the mid-sagittal or sagittal plane. Another one's called the frontal plane, and another one's called the transverse plane. <clears throat> They're all perpendicular to each other, and they'll sort of help to, again, decide or, or define where things are in relationship of one thing to another or a location of a particular structure within the body. So let's talk about this a little bit more. Let's look at this. Now, this is um, a, a, an image of a, of a person, okay? And what we have is, is divided by three major planes. These are called cardinal planes. The thing about cardinal planes is, number one, they are all per perpendicular to each other. They're all perpendicular to each other. So when we look at one plane, it's perpendicular to another plane, which is perpendicular to the third plane. So we have three cardinal planes. The first cardinal plane we'll talk about is called the mid-sagittal or sagittal plane. Both words are appropriate for that. The second plane we're going to talk about is the frontal. There's another word for frontal. Sometimes you'll also see it's called the coronal plane. I'll have that a little bit. And then a third plane is called the transverse plane. And the transverse plane is also called the axial plane. There are other planes that we could have in the body. If you look at this one down here, this one down here is called an oblique plane because it's not on any of those three cardinal planes. If a plane is parallel to a cardinal plane, it's called para. Okay, it's called para. So a paraplane would be like a parasagittal would be some a plane that would be parallel to the sagittal plane. Why? Because what happens is if I look at the body, we could divide the body. All those three planes come together, and they come together in one central spot in the center of the body, and all these planes are perpendicular to each other. So if I'm looking at at one plane, it'll be on one axis. If I look at another plane, it comes through, and they all meet at the center area right there in the middle of the body. Therefore, each of the three planes are perpendicular to each other. Each of the three planes are perpendicular to each other. And I think that's an important fact to remember. So let's look at those planes individually and try to find which each of them is. Let's first of all look at this sagittal or mid-sagittal plane. Okay, And that's this plane we have right here. We can see it. It's right here. Oops, it goes through there. It comes back like that. That's that plane. Divides sort of like the body into a right and a left side. Okay, so we can see our mid-sagittal plane. Um, it, this is also sometimes uh, you'll see the word midline. Midline just refers to a, bot, a, a line that would come down right through the middle of the body, which would divide right and left side. A lot of things to the right of the midline, to the left of the midline. That midline is that middle line goes down through the body. Okay, and again, this is that called the uh, the sagittal or mid-sagittal plane. And it divides the body into roughly equal right and left halves, okay? Now, obviously, we're not totally symmetrical. One side might be a little bit bigger than the other side. One might be a little longer, whatever the case may be. But this basically does say that, you know, it's a, essentially, um, you know, a dividing the body into an equal sides. And again, what happens is it all meets at that central point somewhere down in there where all those three planes come together. So all the other, the other two planes will be perpendicular to the sagittal or mid-sagittal plane, okay? So that's called the sagittal or mid-sagittal plane goes from front to back, divides the body into a right side. So it divides the body into right side and the left side, right down the middle of the body. And that middle portion of the body we call the midline. Okay? That should be easy to remember. The second plane we have is called the frontal plane. Okay? And here's the frontal plane. Now the frontal plane is going this way, this way, this way, this way, and it's dividing the body into a front, front and a back. Okay? So now we have a front and the back. Okay? Through this, through this, uh, 
this uh, frontal plane okay this frontal plane is also called the coronal plane so if you do see the word coronal coronal also means that frontal plane it divides the body into a right a front half and a back half now obviously those uh, there's a lot that's different on the front than on the back and the uh, the structures are a little bit different in the front than the back you know but on the other hand what happens is basically it still meets that mystical area that's right here down in the middle and that little area is called the center of gravity or the center of mass which is right sort of like located in the pelvis where all these three planes come to a single point if i was to draw an xyz graph you know and draw that so i have an i have a um, x x axis a y axis that z axis would be coming out like perpendicular from that straight out from the screen and that's where that's where they're all perpendicular to each other as well so all these planes are perpendicular to each other so now we know what the sagittal plane is divides the right and the left and we now know what a frontal plane is which divides the body into a front and a back okay so that's the frontal frontal plane also called the coronal plane so again if you see coronal plane it means the it means the same as the frontal plane the third plane we have is called the transverse plane, okay? And that transverse plane is this plane right here that divides the body into an upside and a bottom side, okay? So, uh, so an upper and a lower, uh, lower part of the body. Again, not not totally symmetrical because there's things on different on the top as compared to things around the bottom. Also, one other thing I should mention about the uh, uh, transverse plane, it's also sometimes called the axial plane. So if you see axial plane or transverse plane, they both mean the same. They both mean the same. Okay. So these are my three cardinal planes and they all meet parallel to each other. Or, excuse me, perpendicular to each other. So my frontal plane will, or my my frontal plane will divide the body into a front side and a back side. My sagittal plane divides the body into a right side and a left side, and my transverse plane divides the body into an upper half and a bottom half. Okay, and those are the three cardinal planes. Like this one right here. This is obviously a, um, a cadaver head that was uh, sectioned. What plane is this on? I'm going to let you think about this. What plane is this on? Guess. Think about it. Write about it. See if you can see. I'm cutting like this. What plane would it be? That's a hint. Oh, that's a hint. I shouldn't have given that hint. What's that plane that would be on? Actually, what you see here, this is interesting because here's the tongue. Here's the tongue right here. This is part of the brain. This is part of the brain stem right here. Here's the vertebrae. Here's the, where the spinal cord is going to be coming down. Um, this is the nasal cavity in here. Okay. Uh, this would be the skull up in here. Here's the back of the neck. Here's the jaw. You can see the teeth in there. There's the upper lip, lower lip. You know, here's the end of the nose. Here's the, you know, so here's the here's the back of the throat right here, or the throat inside there. Here's the back of the throat right there. Um, trachea would be coming down this way. Okay. So what plane? Now I give you a chance to look at what plane. What plane is this? And hopefully you got this right. Obviously it's a sagittal plane. Okay. So what about these three planes? Let's look at these. Now this is just a, 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 a bigger image of the body. What plane are each of these on? Take a guess. So the last one was on a sagittal plane. What do we have here? Okay, let's take a guess. Think about it. What do you have? Write it down. Write it down. Okay, let's see if you're right. How about the one on the left? What do you think? Yell it out. Go ahead. Yell. That's that sagittal plane because we just saw it on the last image. There's the same image. There's the head right there. There's the brain and stuff like that. So we know that's a sagittal plane. What about this one right here? What about that one? Take a guess. Obviously, that's the frontal plane. That's the frontal plane right there. Why? Cutting this way, front to back. Okay? And that's what we see. Guess what this one is? <clears throat> now, that should be really hard. Let's see. Sagittal, sagittal, frontal, what's left? Okay? This is where they've actually taken the skull and cut it this way. What do we see here? There's an eyeball right there. There's an eyeball right there. Here's the brain, obviously, in here. Nasal cavity sitting in there. So what view? What what image? What plane is that cut on? That's obviously the axial or transverse plane. Okay. So sagittal plane. Let's get that arrow in there. Sagittal plane. Okay. Sometimes called mid sagittal. That's fine. Frontal plane, or also called coronal plane. And axial plane, also called transverse plane. Okay. Now let's take another example. Okay. PA chest, lateral chest. What planes are these views on? Think about it. Go ahead, think about it. I'll give you a second. Think about it. Well, this should be relatively simple because we've talked about it so many times before. 
who said the one on the left was the frontal plane? Had to be. Cutting the body this way, front to back, and that's what we see. If I cut off the front, that's what you see. What do you see here? Here's the heart. Here's the heart right there. You see a little bit of the heart. You see the trachea right there. Here's a clavicle, a collarbone right there, a clavicle. is part of the scapula up in there. These are all ribs here. This right here is the aorta. You can see the aorta. This is all the pulmonary vessels on that side. You see the vertebrae coming down the back, and that's what we see there. So that's obviously on the frontal plane, obviously a frontal plane chest x-ray. And that lateral chest we know would also be called a sagittal on the sagittal plane. What plane is this on? This is a CT scan of the abdomen. CT scans are radiographs as well, but they're taken in slices. There's the hint. Hint, that's anterior or ventral. Ventral is the word for in front, and posterior or dorsal. What plane is that on? Think about that. Now I know that there's anterior and posterior. So this over here would be the right side, and this would be the left, okay? Because it's looking at it from the bottom, bottom up. So what plane would that be on? I've given you a little chance to think about it. What plane would that be on? Hopefully you got this right. It's on the axial or transverse plane, okay? Because it's cutting the body into a top and a bottom side, bottom section. And that's what we see with that particular plane. I hope you understand a little bit about those planes. You might have to go over it a couple times. It's really not that difficult to figure out, but um, it's, it's, uh, it's not bad, okay? What I want to talk now about are what are called abdominal pelvic quadrants quadrants okay quad means four means four so what happens is sometimes to, you know what we use planes to be able to identify locations and and, and uh, positions of things we could also use uh, and sort of like a an arbitrary division of the abdomen to decide where these abdominal organs are you know when we get to the abdominal section the the abdomen is jam-packed with all kinds of different organs okay lots of different things in there and as a result what happens is uh, uh, we, we try to identify where they are by location. Well, you know, one way we could do this is by what we call quadrants, okay? And we actually take the abdomen and divide it into fours. And we're talking about this. What happens is when we divide it into quadrants, what we do is we draw, we draw a vertical line this way and a horizontal line. Well, what do we know what to do, how to draw those lines? The first line we do, let's talk about the vertical line. Let's talk about this one first. Just below the, whoops, I keep on doing that. Just below the, where the, where the ribs come together in the front. If you take your hands and you feel right where the ribs come together in the front, there's a little point that sticks right down there. And that's the bottom part of the sternum called the xiphoid. Now, if you take that tip of the xiphoid, okay, and you run a, a, an imaginary line straight down and through the navel, which is called the umbilicus or uh, umbilicus, and pass it straight down, it comes together where the pelvis meets together right down here, which is called the pubic symphysis. So that vertical line runs from the xiphoid through the umbilicus or the belly button or the navel or whatever you want to call it. Fuzzy, I don't care. It goes through that thing right there. Oh, I don't care now. I'll, call, I'll care later on. Okay. What happens is it runs that straight, that vertical line straight down through that way. Okay. Then that horizontal line is much simpler. All I do is make a perpendicular line to that vertical line right through the, whoops, fuzzy, whatever you want to call it, that umbilicus. Okay, it goes right through that. So now all of a sudden I have quadrants. And this one up here is called the right upper quadrant. There's the left upper quadrant. That's bad. Left lower quadrant and right lower quadrant. Okay, so we can divide those. Now what's the importance and what's the significance of that? Let me get rid of those, those, those words and those lines and stuff like that. What's the significance of that? Well, I know that what happens in a normally appearing abdomen, there are certain things that sit in certain quadrants. Okay, okay, and where they where they should be. Let's look at a couple of these things. Let's look at the stomach. Here's the stomach right here. Here's the, oh, I don't want to do that big line. Here's the stomach that sits right here. It sits right in there. Okay, let's look. Here's the liver. Sits right there. Uh, oh, they do it green. There's the gallbladder sitting right down there. Here's the uh, ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon is going to be here. Oops, the appendix sits right down in here. So basically, sometimes somebody will have a complaint, and what you might see is somebody gets sent down to the radiographic department or the X-ray department, and, and they say um, the, the, the chief com chief complaint CC uh, pain uh, right lower quadrant. Okay, so therefore, this is the area of concern, the right lower quadrant. What's down there? A big thing? 
the appendix, okay, as well as a couple other structures that are down there, okay. So, uh, so in other words, when you take an X-ray, you want to make sure that when that X-ray is obtained, that this area is nice and clear, and you can see everything you need to see before you send it back, okay. So this is just looking at dividing the abdomen into quadrants, okay, with a vertical line from the xiphoid through the umbilicus to the area of the pubic symphysis, and a horizontal line straight through the umbilicus this way. So we have a vertical line, horizontal, so we divide one quadrant, two quadrants, three quadrants, we satisfy our four quadrants. Right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, left lower quadrant, right lower quadrant, and anatomically, things reside there. Most of my stomach is gonna be in my area of my uh, left upper quadrant. Most of my liver is gonna be my right upper quadrant. The gallbladder is gonna be in the right upper quadrant. So somebody will have a complaint in the right upper quadrant, and that's where you might want to look. Okay, and that's just looking at abdominal pelvic quadrants. Okay, it's dividing the abdomen into four basic general regions in which things may happen. Okay, and that's an interesting thing. You know, and it's just let's look. Oh, this is good. Okay, uh, what we have here is we have a cadaver. Okay, so um, let's look at the cadaver and let's 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 divide this cadaver into quadrants. Okay, there's my vertical line, because right here, you might see the little tab of the xiphoid would be right there. Get out of there. And then down here would be the would be the area of the pubis, and the umbilicus is going to be somewhere around in this area right in there. Okay, so, and then let's draw my horizontal line. Let's draw my horizontal Do it. There we go. There's my horizontal line. So now I have my right upper quadrant, my right upper quadrant. I have my left upper quadrant my left lower quadrant and my right lower quadrant. So what do we see here? Let's look. Okay, and my right upper quadrant, guess what this thing is? That's the liver. That's the liver. That's get a little tab of liver right here, but the biggest lobe of the liver, the right lobe of the liver is this area right here. What's that? That's the stinking gallbladder. Okay, that's a big thing right there. Stomach is right here, which is mostly in my left upper quadrant. Okay, if I look down here, what's that? That's the appendix sitting right down in there. This is the rest of the intestines, and so we actually see part of the uh, the uh, here's this is this right here is called the cecum, the lower portion of the large intestine, which is come up here. This is the transverse colon right here, and the descending colon is going to be coming down that way. So basically, these quadrants help me to identify where things are anatomically and structurally, and which is basically what our discussion was today in this particular video. Anyway, okay, those are quadrants. Right upper quadrant. Left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, left lower quadrant. Piece of cake, easy. That should be easy. You know, nobody should ever forget that. Let's look at a radiograph, okay? And let's take this abdomen. This is, a, this is called a flat plate of the abdomen, okay? And let's divide this. There's my my uh, vertical line from the xiphoid to the pubic symphysis. So there's my that's my my vertical line, okay, through the xiphoid umbilicus to the pubic symphysis, and there's my horizontal line. So basically, if I look at up at here, all these little little um, uh, areas like there, you know what those are? That's all gas in the intestine. Okay, that's all gas. See, the liver is going to sit right up there next to you, sort of like homo more homogenous up there. That's going to be the liver. But I can't see anything else that's really there. Okay, so that's how they would look at an abdominal x ray looking at quadrants. Okay, piece of cake, easy. What happens is, you know what? I'm a Virgo, and four isn't enough. I need to have it a little bit more specified, I need a little bit more. Uh, definition. So what happens is they could also divide the abdomen into what they call abdominal pelvic regions, abdominal pelvic regions. And basically this is dividing the abdomen into nines. Okay, so let's get a picture over there what we're talking about. What well, we divided the abdomen into nine regions, sort of like a tic-tac-toe board. Okay, and so I can make two vertical lines, a vertical line here and a vertical line here. And I can make two horizontal lines, horizontal line here and a horizontal line here. Well, what defines these lines, okay? Well, this line right here, my purple line, okay, is called the mid-clavicular line, called the mid-clavicular line, because the clavicle sits up in here, somewhere in the middle of the clavicle, okay? In the middle of the clavicle, so that'd be the mid-clavicular line. And you draw a straight vertical line right down from the middle, middle of the clavicle, straight on down, okay? That'd be the mid-clavicular line. My next two lines are a little bit less sure, okay? This one right here, okay, this one up at the top is called 
the horizontal subcostal line. Sub means below, costo means rib. So where the bottom of the ribs are, if you feel the sides, you feel where the ribs are at the side. I take where the ribs, are, the lowest portion of the ribs on the right side, and the lowest portion of the ribs on the left side, and make a line straight across there. And that's my horizontal subcostal line. Okay. This line down here is a little bit more difficult to figure out, okay? And this down, down here is called the transtubercular line, okay? Trans means across. Tubercle means a bump on a bone, a bump on a bone. And that's going to be coming up pretty soon, okay? Now, tonight, in the privacy of your own home, okay, don't do this on the street or in front of your neighbors or friends, but if you feel your pelvis, the front of the pelvis, on the front, okay, I should, nah, nah, right in here, yeah, oh, that looks bad. Okay. Anyway, right in here, you'll feel a little bump coming out of the front of the pelvis. Okay. And that's called the anterior. Let me write this down. Anterior superior iliac spine, or it's supposed to be called the ASIS. Okay. Anterior superior iliac spine. What you do is you draw a line going from one anterior superior iliac spine over to the other one. And what that does, it creates, it's like a tic-tac-toe board. You know, you could actually sit here and, you know, with your friends, okay, and you could, you know, do whatever you want and, you know, and make your tic-tac-toe. But let's look at this. Now we have these, these, these lines, okay, these number of lines that are there. Let's look at what we have to do with that, okay, and how they've divided the abdomen. Let me get rid of all this garbage here, okay. What divides is it divides the, the abdomen into nine regions, okay. What happens is, let's let's look and let's name these. First of all, we have the right and left hypochondriac. Hypo means below. Conder means, ri oh, it's bad, okay. Conder means um, cartilage, okay. And what happens is the ribs, and we're going to find this out later on when we talk about the chest, and when we talk about breathing, where the ribs actually stop at a certain point and they become cartilage as they go towards the sternum or the breastbone, okay. So the lower portion of the ribs attach to the, the, the lower ribs actually attach to the rib above. They don't attach directly to the sternum, but they are attached to the ribs above, and they attach by cartilage, so they're able to move a little bit. So since this is on the right side, first of all, and it's below the cartilage of the ribs, it's called the right hypochondriac region, okay? The left side is really simple. It's called the left hypochondriac region because it's on the left side, first of all, okay? And it's below the cartilage of the ribs, below hypocartilage chondriac, okay? In the middle, right here, this middle portion is called the epigastric region. Now, if you take a medical terminology, epi means upon, gastric means stomach. So what's this right in there? That's the stomach. Stomach sits right in here. So that's, that's upon the stomach. A lot of people, when they have an ulcer, they'll have epigastric pain, okay? And the pain would be right here in the pit of the stomach, just below the xiphoid, right where it comes to a peak there. Right in there, that would be the epigastric region, okay? So those, now we've named three, right and left hypochondriac, right hypochondriac, left hypochondriac, epigastric, okay? And let's get rid of those. Let's get rid of all those so we can see what's the next line. Whoops. The next line we have is the right and left lumbar regions, okay? So we've gone through hypochondriac and epigastric lumbar. So here's a right lumbar lead region, and here's the left. Now, the easy things to remember are left and right, okay? Hopefully you know that, okay? If not, write a little, little L and R on your shoe, okay? Well, what happens is right and left. Lumbar region is the lower back region, okay? And the vertebrae we talk, we'll talk about later on are called the lumbar vertebrae in the lower back region because it's right in the lumbar region, it's called the right lumbar region. If it's left, it's called left lumbar region. Perfect, okay? So now we've gotten that. The part in the middle now, right here, the biggest thing that we have, the anatomical landmark, is that umbilicus or that belly button or that navel or fuzzy or whatever you want to call it, okay? So that's the umbilical region. So the center portion we call umbilical. So now I have right lumbar, umbilical, and left lumbar region, okay? I'm good. I have six so far. Let's get rid of those. Let's get rid of that stuff. Let's get rid of all that, erase all that stuff on my screen. Let's go down and further, and we'll go down to the next portion, which is called the right inguinal or iliac region. Again, right because it's right, left because it's left. Inguinal or iliac, inguinal or iliac. This portion of the pelvis right here is called the ilium. This wing, this large wing that you could feel, that big crest on both sides of the hip is called the, is called the iliac 
uh, iliac crest. So this area of the of the of the pelvis is called the ilium. So this is called the iliac region, iliac region, left iliac region, right iliac region. It's also called the inguinal region. It's called the inguinal region. And the reason why it's called the inguinal region is because in the lower portion of the abdomen, right down in, let me just draw it with a different color. Let me draw it with a blue. Right down in here, okay, and right down in here, right down in here, there's a canal in the lower abdominal wall of males, okay? Not females, in males. And it's called the inguinal canal, the inguinal canal. And it comes on both sides. When you know, Guys, you've known if they've checked you for a hernia, what they do is they take their finger, put it up by the scrotum, and stick it up along your anterior abdominal wall and say cough, sneeze, strain, push down, whatever the case may be. And they're fitting for a bulge because what happens is there's actually a hole, there's really a tunnel that goes from, from uh, superficial here to deep here inside and goes inside the abdominal wall okay what happens is in males the testes develop start out inside the abdominal inside the abdominal cavity just like the ovaries in females and with time during gestation which is the time that the that the kid is uh, in the in confined in the in the uterus what happens is that uh, testicle, testicles the testes will work their way down through that inguinal canal and they finally end up down in that scrotum or that skin sac that's between the legs okay and that's called the inguinal canal so this region right here anatomically is also called the inguinal region or the inguinal triangle okay so therefore when I look at that area is called the right inguinal or right iliac region and the left inguinal or left iliac region which only leaves me one more and that's the one here in the middle that one here in the middle is called the hypogastric hypo means less than or lower well if this is the gastric region this is a lot lower than the gastric region so they call it the hypo hypogastric region or the pubic region because this is again the area where the pelvic bones comes together and you can actually see it here I'll draw it here in a smaller if you see right here here's the pelvis right here it comes this way it comes this way and it comes down this way this is called the ischium down in here this is the pubis right here and it comes this way down this way Whoop, get out of there okay and across there and then then right down there and it's open right there it's open right there and right in the center right here is that chunk of cartilage which is called the pubic symphysis. So this is where the pubic bone comes together, where one side of the pelvis comes and meets the other, and that's the pubic bone that comes together. So therefore, it's also called the uh, hypogastric or pubic region, hypogastric or pubic region. Why do we have these regions? Exactly the same reason why we had the quadrants, but much more precise. In other words, it instead of having a large area, it limits that area a little bit more. It makes the grid smaller. Okay, so we have, we could be a little bit more precise. So again, my, my right hypochondriac region, my left hypochondriac region, up here you're gonna see the liver and stuff like that. My epigastric, you're gonna see the epigastric region gonna be in here, stomach and liver right in here. Uh, umbilical region, sort of like the center, here's the transverse colon and things like that, a lot of small intestine. My left lumbar region might be something in the back, might be also be descending colon here, ascending colon over here. My right inguinal or iliac region, again, here's the appendix sitting right there. Ooh, it sits right there. Let me get rid of that so you can see it. And yeah, we don't want you to miss the appendix. See that little wormy thing right there? That's the appendix right at the, almost like at the junction. Uh, hypogastric, uh, my bladder, the bladder actually sits down in here. So if we think of what's down in this hypogastric area, the bladder actually sits right here, right behind the pubis as well. And when it's full, it actually gets higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And the uterus in females will also sit. The uterus also sits in females in this area right in here. Here's my left inguinal or iliac region. This is where the descending colon comes down to the bottom. So basically, we'll be talking more about what's in each of these regions but these regions are important simply because what happens is they do help to define what structures are in the abdomen to help me you know again everything we've talked about today had to do something with location okay and basically that's what these both the quadrants less precise regions more precise are and again these regions basically two longitudinal mid clavicular lines which you know middle portion of the clavicle on down the mid portion of the clavicle the clavicle will go here go to the middle straight down and then that subcostal horizontal subcostal line which is the top line below the ribs below the cartilage of the ribs on both sides and then the transtubercular going from the anterior superior leg spine on the right to the anterior superior leg spine on the left and it just helps me to define where things are a little bit better it sort of sort of isolates things in the abdominal cavity a little bit more than what i i, I otherwise you know would, would think about okay.
And this is again just another view. This is another that same cadaver, but we're going to draw it and put it into instead of quadrants, let's put it into regions. There's my two uh, mid clavicular lines. Okay, and let's do that. Let's do our sub subchondral, uh, and let's look at, at the at the uh, uh, trans tubercular line. Hey, we're in good shape. And again, you can see here's the appendix sit or here's the gallbladder sitting right here. Here's the whoop, let me do it this way. So you can actually see, because I don't know if you can see that. Here's the liver sitting up in here again. Here's the gallbladder sitting right there. Um, here's the stomach sitting right in there. Uh, here's the appendix sitting right there. And again, the intestines is some. The intestine is somewhat variable. The intestines will move around a lot. Here's the transverse colon sitting right in here. Here's the descending colon. Here's the ascending colon. This whole area is the ascending colon. So you can see where it gives us a little bit better idea where things are. Okay. A lot of times when people are in the emergency room and they need to get a really quick X-ray because somebody has a, a gunshot wound or a stab wound, they'll say a gunshot wound to the uh, uh, let's see the um, umbilical region or the uh, or a right hypochondriac region, or whatever the case may be. So the, the, it'll say where the you know, this particular point of interest would be in the abdomen. This is just looking at a radiograph the same way. And let's go ahead and do those lines. There's a midclavicular line. There's a midclavicular line. Yeah. Subcondyl. There we go. There we go. From transtubercular. This is the area right here. By the way, this is the area right here. There's a little bump that sits right there, a little right bump right there, which is basically the anterior superior iliac spine. Okay, and that ASIS, like I talked about before. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So what we try to do in this video is a couple simple things. Number one, we try to describe the body in regards to planes, and and try to give you the in, the importance of why planes are so significant to understand. They will lead. Um, you to uh, a lot of good information later on, and they'll, they'll be uh, they'll be very important in being able to understand things. If you understand the planes now and take some time to understand these planes, it'll make a lot of sense to you. All those there's three cardinal planes: the sagittal, mid sagittal, frontal uh, or, or coronal, and the transverse or axial, and they're all perpendicular to each other. X-rays are taken on are frequently taken on these cardinal planes. Okay, on these cardinal planes. Sometimes if it's not it's called an oblique plane or something that's it's not on one of those planes. It's rotated around a little bit, okay? And that would be called an oblique plane. But I would go back and look at the x-rays just to make sure you understand how those x-rays relate to particular planes and how I'm imaging that, okay? Just sort of like if you, if you, uh, if you were like a, a person who was able to see through the skin, what you'd see from that particular point of view point of view. So the plane is one thing and your point of image or your 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 your, your, your line of sight is going to be perpendicular to that particular image. Okay. Um, we also talked about the abdomen dividing it up into uh, planes uh, excuse me into uh, 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 quadrants as well as regions and that just sort of helps to um, identify where certain things are inside the abdominal cavity and hopefully this will be helpful for you and be a sort of like a foundation that's going to really help you to understand a lot of things we're going to be talking about as the semester goes on if you don't understand these things it's going to be difficult to understand a lot of things that are going to be falling down the pike so hopefully this makes a little sense to you if not i'm always going to be available so you can actually get a hold of me and uh, uh, email me and we could talk about what you don't understand plus we'll be talking about these during our class sessions as well okay so anyway, that's a little bit about uh, planes as well as uh, quadrants and regions. And we'll talk with the next one, we'll talk about some uh, um, specific regional names on our next little video. Okay, for now, see you later.